A literally R U F F rough. Okay, so here's the card we are creating. And do you see those pretty little fall leaves? I love the colors of fall. I wish we got more here in Southern California. So I'll just have to use my imagination and create with the pretty colors. I am using a very pretty stamp set from the main catalog. It is called Seasons Blessings. So here's the stamp set. You can see it has foliage, so pretty leaves, stems and leaves, flowers as well, different kinds of leaves, poinsettias, different kinds of flowers, different kinds of leaves, a cute little basket, and this is an ace stamp set because look at this, you've got your sentiments right in the stamp set. So thankful for all you do. Season's blessings, wishing you well, May your day be filled with good things. Oh, it just makes me sigh. What pretty sentiments to use. Lots of cards to be created with this stamp set. And score, there are dies that coordinate with this stamp set. So you can stamp and fussy cut, or you can stamp and crop easily with the dies. Raise your hand if you like to fussy cut. So I don't mind so much. Um, it depends on what I'm cutting, but these dies have some extras. They've got a beautiful textured basket. They've got the outline shape to cut out the basket and the stamp set, but they also have this texturized basket, which is just going to be gorgeous. I'm thinking of fall, Christmas, and just of all year round cards to make. And good news this is the stamp set that's going to be featured in my upcoming bingo and card class so i will mention that a little bit more at the end and um, give you more information on that so that's the stamp set we're using let's get started with the technique so that baby wipe technique is what you're going to be doing to create your own ink pad so let's get started with the supplies you need wipes so baby wipes or these are antibacterial wipes they're gonna work um, I'm going through a lot of them for various reasons because isn't everybody these days so we're gonna be using the wipes I have one of my little cases and I kept this just to share with you if you put it in the case and seal it up you can actually keep on using one that you have pre-created so I'm gonna start from scratch I'm gonna share with you how I created this but this one's still very moist I could still get more inkings out of it just put it in the little container seal it up and you'll have an ink pad for a few more projects so let me get started I am going to <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to move around thinly. He is literally like right at my feet. I'm afraid I'm going to step on him, but he needs to be there. So I'm going to pull out a stack. There's probably about three or four and I'm just going to use them full length. I'm not going to fold them up or anything. I'm putting them right into my container that will protect your worktop so you don't get ink all over. And plus, as I said, that's going to give you the capability to cover it, store it, and work with it again later. So because this is fall, I have selected my favorite fall-ish colors, and I'm going from light to dark. So here's my bumblebee, which is what the background of this card is. In the medium color, I have pumpkin pie, always one of my favorite oranges, and then I have Cajun craze. So I've got three ink colors and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the darkest one and I'm just going to be placing some random droplets right onto my pad. So I bet some of you, many of you have done this baby wipe technique, right? It's been around. There's projects, um, loads of projects you can do with it. It's really fun because you can create that multicolored inking pad uh, for lots of pro projects so I could see also doing some purples and blues for snowy Christmas wintry scenes now I'm gonna work with my pumpkin pie and I'm gonna come in here you see how I left a little bit of space between the droplets and 
when you look down at it, you can kind of see the outline of the oranges, but it's kind of hard to, to know which one are Cajun craze and which ones are pumpkin pie. My last color I'm using, the lightest color, is going to be Bumblebee. Right through here, beautiful yellow. So uh, another close color you could use is Crushed Curry, pretty yellow. And hopefully you have some of these re-inkers. Re-inkers are awesome because when your pads go a little bit dry, no need to get a new pad, you just get your re-inker and add some drops to it, kind of smush it into that spongy pad. Now, the trouble with the, the refills and the ink pads right now, they are on short supply. A lot of the ink colors are going on back order. And I say that, just as a reminder, um, when you see something, it's like shopping at Costco. If you see it, you're going to want to order it. Don't delay. Things are going on back order. And from what I understand, this situation is only going to get worse. Um, things are back on back order. If you watch the news, you know, there are cargo ships out there in the middle of the ocean. And I always think, I always wonder, like, is there a Stampin' Up! container out there? <laughs> Probably, because too many of our things are on back order. Okay, so I've got my ink pad here. Now I am ready to stamp. So I'm gonna bring in my stamps. And for this particular card, I am using the three sizes of leaves. So each one of these has a die to cut them. And you can see some are kind of facing to the right and some kind of fall to the left. I want a mixture of both of them. So I've got my three kinds of leaves. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring in my small cardstock. So this measures four by two inches. This is a really simple layout. Very simple, but pretty to, to let the leaves be the, the star of the show. So four inches by two, I'm just gonna stamp, oops, actually, let this is the actual part for the card ah glad i caught myself i'm using a scrap for my leaves so just very vanilla it's a bigger scrap because i'm going to want multiples on here and what i'm going to do is tap tap i'm going to do multiple tappings i don't want to move it around i want to get those nice colors on their own i'm going to press down and oh, I'm kind of happy with it. Let me try something else. So as you can see, this is a photo polymer stamp set. And you know, I always feel a little bit more confident when I'm stamping on my piercing mat. So let's see if we can get a little bit better image. Nice and solid, getting better. And I'm just gonna do multiple impressions and I think the more we do, the prettier they get. So, which is another argument for storing these or storing your ink pad to continue stamping. So for this particular card, I need about six leaves, different sizes, and I just go to town. I'm doing multiple impressions. I'm gonna go on to one of the other sizes. The cool thing is I will be able to cut multiple leaves because I have different dies for each of the leaf sizes. So I can cut three at a time. Oh, I like that one. That one came in really nice. I'll, I'll let you see close up in just a second. Now I'm going to do the final size, which is one of the smaller leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp as well. Now you can see, I think the more I stamp, the prettier they get. You can see the way the, the color just blends in so nice. Some of them are kind of spotty, but you know what? In nature, things are not perfect. So these are still gonna be used. I just will probably will wanna put the pretty ones right on top, right? So I've stamped and I'm also gonna do some, some solid leaves. So just using my solid ink. I'm using Cajun Craze, same pads as the re-inkers, pumpkin pie and bumblebee. So I'm gonna go from light to dark again. So there's my 
bumblebee pumpkin pie Cajun craze and I'm gonna just ink up a couple of solid and maybe just alternating. I do want to clean that. So here's my chamois. I'm going to wipe this off because right now I've got the multicolors on there. And another tip too, what I see, and this happens a lot during a club gathering when I have lots of stampers here, um, we always want to pick up the chamois and wipe the stamp. I think it's easier. It's actually a little bit better to just leave the chamois in the case, kind of hold on to it as you clean your stamp because you can get your fingers all inky by picking up and holding the chamois. It can get very messy. So just leaving it on, on, the, on the case or in the case on the work surface would, will work better. So then I'm going to just do a couple of inkings in solid colors. So pretty. I love these little styles of the leaves it's very roundish nice solid with the veins running through and let's do a bumblebee as well and I'm gonna do one nice big one here whoops my pads are nice and juicy I juiced them up yesterday so there we go so I've got the Cajun craze pumpkin pie and bumblebee and the next step will be to cut these so remember, you could fussy cut. Raise your hand if you're gonna fussy cut. Or are you gonna go with the dies? I, you know, sometimes if it's a small job, I may just fussy cut instead of getting my little mini out. I will say the nice thing about these is that we can use the mini. Um, I love having the mini right at my within arm's reach, I should say. And I just need the smaller plates and I need my dies. So three sizes, two, three, and one more thing. Another thing that makes the job easy is a little bit of washi tape. That way we can make sure that the dies are not wiggling around as we're trying to cut them. So I would just do multiples and just put a little tiny piece of washi. Now the nice thing is you can actually keep reusing the washi tape. You don't have to get a new piece every time you cut. So, And again, I'm going to want, I got to the end here, I'm going to want about six die cuts going to use the pretty ones. Actually, they're, they're going to wind up all being used. And I don't have one of the small ones on there. I'm going to cut those while I'm at it. So cutting plate on top. Remember, the easiest way to get your sandwich through the mini is to stagger the plates. Don't have them all nice and neat. Stagger them up. That helps kind of feed the sandwich through the machine. And then I like to hold with the opposite hand. So crank with one hand, hold with the opposite. Ah, that is my UPS guy. Did you hear the doorbell? Oh my gosh. I wonder what's here today. I oh, fingers crossed it's stamping up stuff. All right, here we go. So here are my pretty dies. My pretty die cuts. There's one. I'll put these aside and two. All right, so there, there's two of them. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me repeat all of the die cutting. I can show you. Uh, look at all the pretty leaves I've die cut, and they all look special, just like they do in nature. Each one is different. I have some solid ones. I have some that are lighter, some that are a little bit more in-depth. They're all going to be perfect to use on my project. So now that I have my leaves ready to go, the next thing I'm going to do is ink up my greetings. This is the four by two inch, very vanilla. And I'm going to get my Cajun craze, open that up. And oh, I shouldn't have put my, my uh, pierce mat away. I'm going to go ahead and 
stamp my sentiment. And so this sentiment that I'm using is the so thankful for all you do. And I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. Do not smush it into the ink pad. You're gonna get way too much ink. And what happens is you get the ink all around the block and then you have a hot mess. So I'm going to just ink up and I don't wanna be doing it too far to the edge. I wanna allow a little bit of space for my pretty little bow that I'm gonna add. Press down firmly. So nice. So thankful for all you do. I love that pretty sentiment. It's perfect for Thanksgiving. It's perfect for any time. Now I'm going to add a little bit of embellishment to this. I'm going to bring in a very small strip of that amazing cork paper. It is literally paper thin cork. It adds just a touch of nature-ish um, appeal to the project. And I'm going to attach it right behind my sentiment here. And I can do this with a little bit of my favorite adhesive. And we can all say it together, we probably know Tombow Liquid Glue, it's my fave. Very economical, very forgiving just the best all around adhesive for me. So I know other people like the running uh, seals or seal plus. This one works really nicely for me on most projects. So I'm just leaving about a quarter of an inch to peak at the bottom. I'm gonna mount that right on there. And my next layer is going to be a four inch by five and a quarter inch cardstock. This is Bumblebee and not sure if you can see I have soft embossed it with an amazing folder from the annual catalog and uh, don't you wish I knew the name of this folder. Anybody help me out? Let's see if I can find it for you real quick. So I'm just going to my annual catalog. And first of all, I had this whole stamp set and bundle. It's on page 94. The bundle itself with the 10% savings is $47.50. The stamp set's just $21. And you can see some pretty projects, samples that Stampin' Up! offers us. When I go to the back to the folders, let's see if I can find the name of that. Ah, that's the Macrame 3D folder that I used. All right. So, and I pre-embossed it for you. Now, here's the thing. This folder will not fit in the mini. You need the standard machine to do, to do the embossing. Um, but you just sandwich and crank it through the machine. You get this pretty textured effect, which adds a lot to your card. So now I'm going to layer up and I'm just gonna adhere my stamped paper right to my embossed paper, still with my liquid glue right like this and just a tiny bit don't add too much it's going to ooze out and notice how I don't go all the way to the edges because I don't want it oozing out the edges I'm using my grid paper and I don't really have an exact location where I'm putting this um, layer I guess it's going about three quarters of an inch down from the top of the card and I can use my grid lines to make sure that I have it straight Sometimes you can just eyeball and some of us like it precise. So it all kind of depends on what kind of a crafter you are. But honestly, regardless of the type of crafter you are, the project comes out beautiful because it's handmade, right? Right, so now I've got this layer complete. I am going to bring in my card base, which happens to be eight and a half by five and a half. And I pre-scored it right here, right down the middle, which is four and a quarter. I'm going to bring in my bone folder and just fold it over and I'm make, going to make sure I'm corner to corner because if there's anything askew in this score, you still have a chance to correct it. Just force it to be flush aligned. This is a vertical card, so I'm going to have it uh, standing up. Let's see if I can push that back in there. Now, I like this layer with some dimensions, so I'm going to pop this over and add some standard size dimensionals and I'm gonna be kind of generous with these whoops didn't grab the whole dimensional there we go and 
got a mess going on with the coverings of my dimensionals. And I'm gonna be generous because I want this to be supported nicely. Now you can pick off the covering or you can just bring in your pick a tool and remove it. Sometimes fingernails get in the way of removing these. It's kind of hard. We're a team, my pick a tool and I. So it makes the job a lot easier. And here we go. All right, now this is just going to be adhered to the card base and I'm gonna wind up with about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So pretty, it's coming together, I love it. And now I just need to kind of scatter my leaves, kind of like the wind has scattered them. And I mentioned, I'm gonna be using about six of these little leaves. And I'm just taking a selection of them. Doesn't matter which ones, what color. Now I've got one that's bum just bumblebees, so that's gonna go in there. I like kind of mixing them up, just like they would be blowing around in the garden, all different colors, making a nice little mess for fall. And so I've got those, and I've also added dimensionals to the leaves here. So we're gonna have a, a nice dimensioned card. I'm just gonna flip these over, put a little dimensional on them. And this, I think I mentioned earlier, this stamp set, this bundle, will be the feature in the bingo and card class event coming up on the 17th. I did have to reschedule it. Originally, it was supposed to be the 10th, and uh, not just rescheduling the date, but I also had to think about the projects again because some of the things are going on back order. The cute little, cute Halloween pumpkin punch is on back order. And that was the original uh, stamp set and bundle that I was going to use. And since it went on back order, I pushed it to the Pretty Pumpkins, only to discover one day that some of the items from the Pretty Pumpkin suite were on back order. So now here we are. And my final choice, I think this is now plan C, is gonna be Season's Blessings. And actually, I think it all worked out because I love this little set. Not only do you get fall projects, you get Christmas projects and actually year-round projects with this set. And one more, I think I'm gonna put it right in here. It's kind of tight. I like that. Okay, so what do you think? I always like to add one last embellishment. I'm not gonna add any dazzle to this one. What I'm going to add instead is a pretty little bow. I am using the Bumblebee Gingham Ribbon. And I think I've shared this in person classes. I have this little tool, it's called a Bow Easy. And it makes a perfect bow every time. It looks kind of funky. Once you make a couple of the bows, maybe, I don't know, maybe more than a couple, um, you'd get pretty good at it. So I haven't even cut the ribbon yet. I'm just taking a length and I'm gonna, these little arms are for the various sizes of bows. So this one makes a nice size. This is probably my most frequently used size. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my ribbon and I'm just gonna lay it across there. I have a little bit of length, probably like five inches. I'm gonna wrap it behind and you can see it crossing over. My next step is to fold it back, make the loop by folding it back and passing it through that, that gap in there to the bottom, bring it up to the top. And now right between the little arms, now I'm gonna pass it through the loop of the ribbon and I'm gonna use my pick tool to push that through. So this, <laughs> means I'm not wasting very much ribbon. Sometimes I cut the length and I wind up cutting an inch or two off each side. This one, I'm not, there's no waste. That's what I love about it, especially this pretty little gingham ribbon. I wanna use it over and over. So look how sweet that little tiny bow looks. Like, could you make a bow that perfectly? I pull it off, 
Now, usually I like the knot on the flip side. There we go. I am going to attach it to my project with a glue dot. So let me bring in my mini glue dots. So mini glue dots are my favorite way to attach ribbon. I get that, I get that question asked frequently. I'm, I don't use my favorite liquid glue for ribbon. I feel like the glue dot does the job nice and neat without any mess. There we go. Now, sometimes the ribbon frays a little as you're creating with it. I just take my ribbon snips. These are special just for ribbon because they have that little ribbon attached to the um, handle. I'm gonna trim that off just to cut off the frays. And there you go. So thankful for you. What do you think? So this is Bumblebee. Let me share with you. I did make a couple other colors. That's Bumblebee, my original color. I also made it in pumpkin pie. Remember, I'm using a light to dark uh, color spectrum. There's pumpkin pie. And then last, I used Cajun Craze. So all pretty cards, same layout. Everything's the same. A very simple, a nice little thank you card or Thanksgiving card. Um, because this is colored cardstock, I would add my piece of cardstock in, on the inside, very vanilla, so I can write a note or stamp a thank you. Now, I'm not sure if you can see on camera. These are a little bit different. This is using the pearlized paper. You can kind of see the shimmer and shine. Not sure if it shows up on camera very well when I compare it to that. Um, I love that pearlized paper. The trouble with it is it's kind of slick. It takes longer to dry. You could heat set it, but I didn't want to have to bring out the heat gun. So I just used the very vanilla. Thank you, Lisa. You like the pumpkin pie? I do too, but it's, it's hard for me. I kind of like the Cajun craze too. I don't, I'm not sure. So I have all three. Um, let's see what you think. Make a comment down below. Tell me which one is your favorite. And tell me if you would case this and make it yourself. And if you do, I want to see you share it down below um, in the comment section. Doesn't matter if it's today or over the weekend. Maybe you'll be stamping as well for World Card Day. All right, so there are my cards using the Seasons Blessings. Tomorrow is the deadline for the Seasons of Fun class. Just some reminders here. The class includes the stamp set, designer series paper, the rhinestones, and the supplies to make eight cards. It's $53 shipped. If you want, if you're local and you want to do porch pickup, I will knock off the shipping cost on that. Just message me and I'll take care of that for you. These cards or this stamp set will be the feature in the upcoming bingo on October 17th. Local, it's at two o'clock. You can join on Facebook same time two o'clock pacific standard time um, we will be playing bingo and card making intermittently so between games of bingo we'll be doing a project if you're joining via facebook you do get your kit delivered direct to your door you'll have everything that you need all the materials you won't get obviously won't get the stamp set but you have the option to add the stamp set or the bundle at a discounted price you won't pay shipping or handling if you let me know that you want to do that when you register. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Please join me tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm gonna kick off World Card Making Day with a few projects, and then I'm gonna be joining in on others' fun to celebrate the day. Let's get those cards in the mail to let our peeps know that we're thinking of them. Have a great weekend.